And here we have some gasification, just like when you light a match. You have some gases burning, some solids burning. By changing the fluid dynamics, then we go to burning just the gases. Unless it's just a, not working. Am I outside on there? No. Nope. Yeah. There. And there, right away, you see down below that its flame mm. has stopped, and now we're just gas. Beautiful. So now we are a gas stove. Wow, just fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful. Wow. That's so simple. Yep. Yeah. That's amazing. I've never started cooking. Sure. Uh, I've got my dirty pan, so. But is it, is it like instantly gas now? Yeah, this is a gas stove. Yeah. And, and the gas there's a little hole here, so you can see there's still a little hole in the flame. It's not quite stable yet, but as it heats up and gets to regime, then that'll turn blue, and we can turn off the lights, and you can actually see it. And so it's still, it's still kind of just it's sucking out the last of the oxygen right. inside. Exactly. You've done a lot of homework. Gas, I'm, I'm sure I understand. It's the gas between the walls now, no? Mm -hmm. The gas is between the walls, and it's mixing with the air coming from below. So you have, you know, for good combustion, you need the right mixture of yeah. combustion and oxygen. Yeah. So the trick is is to not make too much gas because then you can't yeah. burn it. Yeah. And there's not a problem. It kind of just burns through everything going down. Um, not a problem at all. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. So now normally when you have an open fire, if you put a pot next to it, it makes smoke. The little pot stands were designed so that in a quick setting you can actually have it set up so that there is no need for a chimney. So a little oil. And what am I making for well, you today? Some, uh, garlic uh, uh, with uh, vegetables. Okay, yeah. good. Let How that much heat does up it then. Cost to varies from country to country. Uh, certainly, in the, the advantage is these are designed for mass production. Yeah. So you could, in theory, crank out 8,040 hours, and that gets the cost down quite a lot. Yeah. But mm, with supplements in some countries, as little as 6 euro each. But would, for example, if you would do this in Bangladesh, yeah. uh, and you would put all your skin, would you, you would go there and demonstrate, and they would find that you wouldn't kind of they would find we'd, metal there in, in the... Exactly. Well, we'd start... Uh, I mean, the top and bottom plate clearly needs some special cutting. Yeah. The two cylinders you can make out of any kind of metal, right? Yeah. Uh, the same with the regular Ruchia, which are a little more powerful, mm -hmm. which the top and bottom plate are high-tech, mm -hmm. but anybody can make a cylinder. Yeah. And then as the market grows, they can use that market um, to... There we go. They can use... Uh, that market to then make capital investments and and start their own business and do the do their own production. So this is also part of the plan, that, that we, uh, basically to for it to grow by itself. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Well, th that's the entire world stove model. We don't we don't actually sell stoves. We go from country to country and help them set up their own stove manufacturing, locally owned, locally run. Because so it's a business it's a, at the same time. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, like I said earlier, number one, people want to work. They need jobs. <laughs> so how, how, and then, and then they're also interesting how to how, how to get the people to ever get the, the circle with get, getting it out on the earth. And people are actually using it. So, so the next thing, so, yeah. the next thing. So. Um, it's a full cycle, so the first you're building stoves, you're building pellets, the pellets go to the people. In the full model, uh, I give you your stove. Congratulations, you now own a stove. Maybe with microfinance you pay me back at half of what you normally pay for fuel. So if you're paying two dollars a day now for fuel, I give you the stove right away, you pay me one dollar a day until you've covered the cost of the stove. The same day I give you the stove, I give you a bag of pellets. That bag of pellets is good for one week. At the end of the week, you come back to me with all the biochar you made, you give me your biochar, I give you more pellets. You never have to buy fuel again. The model becomes economically sustainable if carbon credits are then assigned to that biochar. So then the biochar pays the stove hub to produce the pellets, and then the biochar... Then you have to have somebody who wants the, the, uh, the biochar for their... 
you put it in the soil. Yeah. Even if you don't sell this biochar, you put it in the soil, you increase soil fertility, water retention, you're sequestering carbon. Yeah, that's who is, who is me and you, who is you? I mean, you're not going to be in everywhere. In no, the no, but that's why in, in, in the fifth phase, you team up with either um, uh, agronomists or foresters and help with the afforestation programs. The first manufacturing plant in Haiti is going in the north where there's already desertification. So people can't live there because there's no food. You can't have things, but if you can start growing food again, it becomes appealing. If you can start growing food and you can start having jobs, that's where it becomes interesting. So the, the key points are to start in places where the soil, we've already destroyed the soil. Um, and there's the incentive because it allows you to grow food where before you couldn't. And that's a strong motivator. I mean, carbon credits are nice, but eating is even more important. Ideally, that's the ideal. Because okay. in the dream, that, no, no, no. In the dream world, if they, the, the reason you bring it back to the main hub yeah. is you need somebody to measure the biochar, yeah. Yeah. make sure it's safe to put in the soil because they've made it correctly, and then tell them how to put in the soil. You yeah. need a good community activation group yeah. to help teach people how to put it in the soil. I mean, just like right now, people who use chemical fertilizers, you're given one liter of chemical fertilizer, and you're, you read the instructions, take this liter, put 10 liters of water, mix it in, um, uh, and then spray it on this much land. Biochar needs to have the same sort of exact instructions, so people are taught how to use it. And then if the next year it means they had, had to not buy chemical fertilizers, and they didn't have to use as much water, Word of mouth will be your best advertisement. It's getting very hot here. Yeah. yeah I can hear it. And and how much smoke have we made so far? No, but very little. Yeah. I might burn the garlic, which I'm a very no, no, no. Of an Italian, no. Oh, no. It, he did. He yeah. did. He did burn the garlic for the record. Yes. So. You should try. Yeah. How uh, can you tell about the the yield? Uh, changes you've observed when you put the char into the soil? There have been many studies. Um, some, uh, Franco Millet of CNR has had very successful yield studies in wheat. Um, some crop yield increases from biochar have been as high as 30% improvements. So that That's becomes amazing. a very important thing. And also you see it on the roots of the plants that they, uh, the roots gets much Absolutely. And bigger. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Feedstock will make a big difference because different feedstocks will have more nutrition in the biochar and less. So I'm actually a big fan of not using wood to make biochar because wood already has so little nutrition in it. Um, and and it's, this, is, this is sequestered CO2. We've already sequestered it. If we make a floor out of it, it's there. It's not going anywhere. But the leaf that you're holding in your hand, if you don't do something with it, three months from now, it's already back up in the air. We can, but let's take a piece of paper first. I'll show you something with that. Yeah. Can can we turn these off? Yeah. Great. Hard paper would be great. Just a tear of that would be great. I don't know whose they are.